Hey, wait a minute, are you guys early? Nope, I guess I'm late. <laughs> I'm John Zadar. This is On Top and Hot, and it is Monday, August 8th. Now, what we particularly do on this show is we like to look at OTC and penny stocks. See, I'm a day trader, and I see a lot of stuff through the day, and obviously I can't share it all with you, but I can share some of it. So I'm looking for stocks that got potential. Maybe they've got technical setups on the charts, or there's a lot of buzz going on on the internet, or there's just some good highlighted news like this. That's highlighted news because I brought it to your attention. Now, this is news I've looked at over the last five days. The oldest is at the top and the newest is at the bottom, but it's all still active news. Now, this all came from the otcmarkets.com website. That's where we're at right now. This is where I do all of my due diligence. This is where news comes in, filings comes in, but I'll get into more of that in just a minute. Now, this is just OTC news. We look at penny stocks too. Now, yes, those are all penny stocks, but a penny stock can be any stock on any market as long as it's under $5. So we're going to be looking at NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, the American Exchange, wherever they are, we are going to go there boldly. Now, as I said, we're over here at the otcmarkets.com website. This is my go-to site whenever I do research on OTC stocks because it's never outdated. I want you to think about that for a minute. Never outdated. Well, you know, we're talking 99.5% of the time because it's updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC for every single OTC stock. So there's no reason to go searching, at least not initially. Come here. If you don't find what you're looking for, then go out into the big, big world looking for that little piece of information. Otherwise, this is going to save you a lot of hassle and a lot of time. So let's take a look at how our OTC market finished today. Doesn't look like it was all that great. It's probably about that much better than yesterday. We have a low dollar volume of 1.5 billion. Our average is 2.1. Share volume, for Pete's sake, folks. We are so far under 10 billion, which is really not even a high number. We're at 7.5. I think we were a little bit lower yesterday, so it's up just a tad. And our trades, hey, we're up over 250,000, which is nothing to really get excited about. Our average a year ago was something like five, six hundred thousand trades a day. So we've got a long ways to go. Now, these sort of days are really strange when you look at the market because you don't get any runaway runners, thousand percent things. You know, you're finding stocks that have small catalysts. You got to dig deeper to find the stocks that are moving on the charts. And that's what I had to do today. I dug deeper and I've got some interesting ones and an explosive one. Come on, I'm ready to share this with you. First stock up for your consideration is ticker GSFI. This is Greenstream Holdings. Now, the company did not have any catalysts of her own today. That's to say she didn't have any filing, she didn't have any press releases, but she is running on some soft catalysts. There was news she put out just a couple of days ago, I think has something to do with it, and there was news that came off of Capital. That's right, the government put out some news, which I definitely think has this thing, and a lot of other companies moving right now. So she finished today at 0018 with... Oh, we're up to 100% gains now. When I just started here, it was 84%. Now we're up to 100%. So we are getting some aftermarket activity. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got a verified profile and a transfer agent verified as well. We want to see this because it's verified information, as it says here. This is validated by a third party the otcmarkets.com website behind the scenes. Now, I'm not sure what information you're verifying, but it is important. So we do like to see these green ticks come up. So this looks good. So what sort of business is this company in? Solar. Solar Energy. They tell us that Greenstream Finance is a Wyoming-based corporation with satellite offices in Malibu, California, and New York, New York. So they're going from coast to coast. They're focused on exploiting currently unmet markets in the solar energy space and are currently licensed in quite a few states and Canada. They've got subsidiaries such as Green Rain Solar, which works on proprietary greenhouse technologies. Right now, they're working on increasing their footprint in New York, New York, where they are looking at 50,000 to 100,000 square foot rooftops where they can install their solar panels. So they got a lot going on right now. So what is the relative volume wrapped around this company considering she didn't have her own catalyst? Pretty good, really good. She jumped from 193 million, which is a great share count on your daily basis, but today she went up to almost a billion, 837 million shares, quite impressive. Share structure, Oh, not so impressive, not at all. We've got a ton of shares over here, 2.5 billion, and they got 10 billion authorized. 
Now that, just think of that as a bank account. It's great if they use it to actually make deals with other companies, but they start pouring these onto the market, oh God, the float's gonna be humongous. So let's just hope it doesn't get any bigger than 2.5 million. Financials, well now that's a bit unusual. I mean, it sounds like they're doing a heck of a lot to me and we have no money all the way up to March of 2021. On the quarterly, we got nothing this year. Now I am a little curious. They're in business, they have a business. So if they're not making any money, shell risk should be over here. If you're not making money, but you're in business, there's a problem. So why there is not shell risk here or why we don't see revenues, I'm not real sure. Disclosures, well, our financials are all current, of course, because she's pink current. And our 8Ks, I like to look at 8Ks. They're like golden age. You never know what you're gonna find inside. Could be an acquisition, a merger. Could be a reverse split. You just never know what you're gonna find inside. And we've got one here and there is a piece of news that actually came out that correlates to this. So we're just gonna go take a look at that news. Now the news they brought in here is old. This only goes back to October of 2020, but you come down further, they bring in news from offline. So the companies put their news out there, but they're not bringing it in here. It's up to them to do that. I don't know why they're not doing that either. Now this news came out August 4th. They tell us that Greenstream Holdings is an emerging leader in the solar utility and finance space. In response to shareholder requests for updates, today the company said that it will use debt to employ a leveraged buyback program and has, at present, no plans for a reverse stock split. That's all good to hear, not very specific. The frequency and the amount of the stock buyback will be determined by the U.S. Securities and Exchange Commission, the SEC, regulations and revenue. And that's really all the information you get here, that they have a buyback that they are going to be doing, which is going to put more value on the shares. They're going to buy shares off the open market so the float gets smaller and smaller. But they are going to be using debt to do that. So you're eating away at both ends. You're giving more shareholder value and you're lowering the company's debt. So that is absolutely great. And they have no plans for reverse stock split. Everybody wants reassurances. But we have no idea how much they're going to buy back, when they're going to buy it back. We're going to have to wait for the SEC to tell us what can be done there. Now, the outside news, well, you're probably aware of this. Last week, key senators suddenly announced an agreement on a $369 billion bill that would provide the most climate funding ever seen in the United States. And that's it, folks. There are lots of green energy companies running on the hopes that they're going to get some of this money. We don't know who's going to get it. We don't know how you qualify. But that's the catalyst right there. Value coming in by buying back shares value coming in by getting rid of debt and assurances that you don't have a reverse stock split on a 2.5 billion share count. You want that because that just screams reverse stock split. Absolutely does. And then of course you got the government backing that sort of business. So let's go take a look at that chart and see what she's up to. She was still running when I started this. This is one of my best parts. I love charting. This is ticker GSFI, six month, four hour chart being beautifully displayed on my free trading platform, Thinkorswim. You like it? Go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for a free trading account and you can get it too. You don't have to give them any money. You don't even actually have to trade with them. Just keep your account open and you can use Thinkorswim anytime you like, absolutely free. So we are looking at ticker GSFI, six month, four hour. Looks like most charts on the OTC. We got a high bubble here and a low bubble on this side. Our high bubble is 1.75 cents. Our low bubble a couple months ago was triple zero two. Remember the lowest price you can buy a stock for in the open market is triple zero one. So this was hovering just over the basement floor. Now you can definitely see our volume has been increasing over the last three months. It's been jumping with big spikes getting bigger and bigger. So this is just not about Capitol Hill passing a bill or buying shares back. There's been something going on. People are looking at this stock, but the one thing they're not gonna see is any money. Where's the money? That's what I really wanna know. And she has broken the 200. It's been six months, maybe even longer since she has gotten over the 200 on the four hour. I want you to notice these price bars. Look at how tiny they are when they're underneath every SMA. When you got on top of the 50, got some monkeys off your back, some free room to move around, our bars got bigger. And once it pushed up to the 200, look at this. Look at how she expanded big time. 
and all of our technicals are screaming right now. Every single oscillator is pushing up. You can't lose with that. 20 day, one hour view. So we've had what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven day run here with two days of dip. And it looks like this is the fourth. This is the day that the news came out saying that they were going to have a share buyback. And it jumped from uh, 0008 to 0012. You're talking 8 to 12, 50% jump and gave most of it back. And then the following day, it just went down. It threw everything away and it didn't even look like it was going to do anything nice. But today, without any catalyst, without any push from anything, it took off. Our technicals are still ripping. Everything is hot, hot, hot. Looking at that five day, five minute. So there's your jump on the news of the share buyback, fell back down to the 200, far under the 200, and we had a recovery today. Don't know why. She's stair stepping up, hit a high bubble here, bounced back, and has a little bit of activity after market. And it looks like it is the 50-day SMA that she is respecting. Maybe it's the two, nope, it's the 50. Yeah, she came all the way down. I like to know which SMA they respect. That is to say, which one are they gonna bounce off of? Because if they break that one, then that's when I get concerned. Right now, she looks like she is still trying to push up. Our technicals are even keel right now. They're not hot, they're not cold, they're lukewarm. Now, I gotta be honest, I don't see any extra push, any extra momentum in this stock, because there was no direct catalyst, but you could see the volume has been increasing. We have now broke the 200, and she has been on a seven day trend. She's worth a watch. But we want to know where's the money. That's the bottom line with any company, making revenues. So we need to see something come out on that. But besides that, if you're just looking for a day trade, keep your eye on this one. But keep in mind also it's got 2.5 billion shares. So I don't know how much run you'll get. But she's proven that for the last seven days she is excited about something. Our next stock is ticker ABCE. This is Abco Energy. Now this company didn't have any catalyst today either, just like the last one. As a matter of fact, this is virtually a clone of the last stock now that I think about it. They have no catalysts of their own today. No news presses, no filings. But they are running on soft catalysts. They had news, oh, a couple weeks ago. That was pretty decent. And of course, you've got the bill out because they're a solar company as well. They finished the day at 007 with 52% gains. They're on the pink tier. They're current. They got a transfer agent verified, but we don't yet have a verified profile. So I would hope that would be coming soon. Now, this is a solar company, as I just mentioned, but they do more than just solar. Abco Energy is a commercial and residential installer of photovoltaic solar systems, LED light solutions, air conditioning equipment, and services and financing for all of these products. So what sort of volume did ABCE have today? Well, not as much as the last company. She went from 393,000 to 2.2 million, about six times the normal volume, which is not anything small. Share structure. Whoa, all right. It's better than 2.5 billion. I'm not going to call it a small float, but relatively speaking, yeah, it's pretty small. We're at 104 million. Is this company making any money? Yes, yes, they are. We got to take these three zeros up here, throw that behind the numbers. It makes more sense. This company did a total of 1.3, almost $1.4 million at the end of last year, and they got to keep about a half a million dollars. Quarterly, they are still making money. Almost $300,000 the last three months, and they got to keep about $100,000. So they are doing something. Disclosures. Uh, we've got nothing new here since June of this year. So let's just jump on over to that news. Now, the news up at the top is, again, like the last stock, old. They're not bringing in their current news. This is from 2020. And their most current piece of news came out on the 26th of last month. Abco Energy Inc. announces backlog of solar projects. They tell us here that as of July 26, 2022, the company had signed backlog projects over $1.4 million, 
Coupled with the sales for the first six months of 2022, the company believes that sales for 2022 should exceed $2 million. This is a 72% increase over 2021 sales that occurred during the COVID time. And if you go reading on down here, they tell you about deals they're making, deals they're signing, deals they haven't signed yet, but they're about to sign. And that's what it's all about, making money. But this is about two weeks old. Then you have the fresh news that just came out about the bill, $369 billion. They may be able to get some of it. And voila, you got yourself a stock that's moving. Let's go take a look at that chart. This is ABCE, six-month, four-hour chart. So we've got a high bubble back here of just over two cents and a low bubble a few months ago of double zero three. She had a very strong run right here have no clue what this is about. I did check the OTC market for news. They don't have anything listed and I didn't do a Google search. But whatever this news was, it was big. This jumped over 400%, came crashing down really fast, went underneath the 50 and had another spike here. I'm not sure what this one was about either folks, honestly, but these spikes trying to get through the 200 are not holding her above it. So she just started slowly creeping on hands and knees to get on top of that 200. And right now she has successfully mounted it and she is above the 200. She came down and tapped it here and is bouncing off. Technicals are strong. You can see our PPO had that bounce right with that price. Boink, it is now going up. Our trajectory on our trend is up. Crossover on the MACD above the signal line is a strength sign, and we are trying to break into the 60s on the RSI. The only thing that doesn't look really, really good here is the volume. It's stronger than the days before, but honestly, if you back out, you can see there really isn't much volume going on here. 20-day, one-hour view. So she's firmly above that 200. The only time she broke through, she actually created a low bubble doing it. When she got back up, she went on top of the 50 and for many days rode quite firmly on the 50-day SMA. When she finally lost her footing, she fell right to the 200 and bounced off that and is again up there. She gave away about 50% of those gains, it looks like, but the technicals are still hot. Let's take a look at that closer on that five-day, five-minute. So there's your low bubble. I can tell she is definitely above the 50% mark. I like to draw what I call the attitude line. It's very much like the Fibonacci tool. You find the bottom of a surge and the top of the surge. And this works with falls too. You find the top where the fall started and the bottom where the fall ended. And then find the middle. You can do an absolute by doing mathematically or you can just eyeball it just so you have a, a good definition of where you should be. And we are well above the 50% gain mark. That's 50% of everything she put on the table. That's 100%. Right now, she looks to be at about 70% of her gains. She did come down and bounce right off of this 50 and the 50 day and is pushing up right now. Technicals look cooler, not warm. However, you're still dealing with companies that are running on soft catalysts, old news of their own, the Capitol Hill putting out all that money for green energy. There's a lot of hope. There's a lot of speculation. And you know what? There's a lot of other companies just like this out there. So if you start seeing a couple solar companies running tomorrow, look at all of them. Look at all of them. You could get into one and still make money if one's already run away that you couldn't catch in time. This last stock we're taking a look at, I am excited to be talking to you about folks. Now, it's not the first time I've talked about TGGI, Trans Global Group. We've talked about it before, about exactly what happened today. They had a news press come out today. They finalized a deal that we've been waiting for for over two years. As a matter of fact, we haven't had a news press since March of 2020. And when you come over to their Twitter account, we haven't had a tweet since September of 2020 which coincidentally is where this story begins. They tell us down here that Mr. Chen Ren is now the new sole officer and control person after purchasing the control block from TGGI. More updates to follow. Well, they didn't do that. We didn't get any updates on Twitter. We didn't get any updates on news presses, filings. Matter of fact, the only thing we had in the filings, they just kept saying over and over again, is that they had intentions of merging with a Chinese wine company. But they gave us no names or anything. However, they did give us information a couple years ago, which made us know what was going on. And I'm going to cover all that here in just a minute. 
So the company finished today at 0.0115 with almost 22% gains. Now that is a great buy price, especially when you think a stock is about ready to run and surge. That price is great. Think about it. You buy a stock at one cent, when it hits two cents, you've made 100% gains. When it hits three, you've tripled your money. Four, you've quadrupled your money. When it hits a silly nickel, you have 500% gains. Buying near the penny is great. She is on the pink tier. She's current. She's got both of those green ticks I'm always telling you to look for. And she has been a shell company all this time. No business whatsoever, not making any money. Now, they're not making any money yet, but they did close the deal. Now let's talk about this company. As I said, there has been no information about this company for quite a while. You saw September 2020 was the last tweet. Would you believe that the next piece of information we get is actually from a newspaper? I'm not kidding. This newspaper article surfaced in January of 2021. Lots of people found it. I found it, started passing it around. Now, it seems to be a translation because it is broken English. It's kind of tough to read. And they got a list of a whole lot of names here of people that are maybe in the picture that we just can't see. Now, the gist of this article is that TGGI is merging with Shesjen signed. Drunk Ferry Return to Wine Industry. Now, they tell us about the deal they've made right down here in the bottom, that they actually make a deal. But we don't see any filings over here in the U.S. We don't see any news presses. We get no information. So I got to presume everything is being done over in China, and it won't come over here until it's done, like today. But what we do learn here is that Mr. Ren Feiyang, which is Chen Ren, Chen Ren is the chairman of the board of directors of Trans Global Group, TGGI, and is also the chairman of Drunk Ferry Return Liquor Industry. And this is where it all came together, folks. We learned that Chen Ren owned Zhu Gai Liquor in China. He owned that company, and he owns TGGI. And he kept telling us over and over again in their financial disclosures that TGGI was purposely there to help a Chinese merge happen with a liquor company and that they wanted to push it to the NASDAQ. So we just put everything together. Those two companies, TGGI, Zhu Gai Liquor, were going to come together. But we thought it would happen sooner than this. Now let's get a little more information on the companies and the man. We're over here at Microcap. This came out March 30th. They tell us that TransGlobal Inc. is a Delaware holdings company that plans to conduct substantially all of its operations and business in China through a PRC-based subsidiary. Now, when you have a Chinese company in America, they can't do direct business to China. You got to have an intermediary. So they've got a company over in the Virgin Islands. So everything goes from the U.S. to there over to China and then back the same way. They go on to tell us that on April 29th, one day after the Hong Kong requirements for filings were met, Chen Ren executed the change of control documents for TGGI. In it, they stated clear intentions to acquire liquor companies in China. Chen Ren is now the controlling shareholder of TGGI, having purchased control for a mere $150,000. Now we get some information about the company they're merging with. Zhuzhai Gai International Holdings Group is a specialty wine and spirits company based in China. And they have emerged as a potential leader in the nanotechnology based wine production. Now this is very interesting folks. This is how it works. Nanotechnology, they take these nanoparticles that are magnetic and they attach them to a polymer so they're together. Then they put that polymer into the wine. The polymer attracts all the impurities out of the wine and it sticks to the polymer. Then they use a magnet, grab those nanoparticles that are magnetic, that are stuck to the polymer and pull it all out. You got the impurities stuck to the polymer, stuck to the nanoparticles that are magnetic and you end up with a healthy, clean wine. And it is catching fire over there, folks. It is getting big very fast. Now, a little information about Mr. Chen Ren. Chen Ren was a famous singer-entertainer in his earlier years. Amongst his many songs and albums, he made numerous songs about wine. He dreamed of making a specific wine, sharing it with the world. Chen's passion for wine matched his dreams of becoming a NASDAQ company, and he made it clear that his intentions were to one day list TGGI on the big boards. Mr. Ren is the founder and owner 
of Zhu Jingai wines, which produces over 4,000 tons of wine, that is 11 million one liter bottles, annually using their patented methods of production on operation site more than 300 acres large. And at this time, in March, they had expected Zhu Jingai wines to reverse merge with TGGI. And that's what we expected. Nobody actually said the name. Nobody ever told us the name. We just put two and two together. We figured if Chen owns this and owns that, why wouldn't he bring them together here? So let's get to the current stuff. This is an 8K form, and it is a long one, folks. I mean, this is one of the longest 8Ks I have ever seen. And we're not going to go through all of it, but I have highlighted some information I want you to see. I may have to scroll a bit, so stick with me here. This 8K came out August 3rd. They tell us down here... Uh, on August 8, 2022, the company effectively acquired ZXGBVI. You can think of that as Zhu Jingai Liquor. <laughs> In a reverse merger business combination, of which the company was a shell company prior to the acquisition. Then they say something very interesting here. They are also entering into a business combination with other than the shell company. Kind of a strange way to say it. The long and short of the story is they have other companies that are all part of this wine liquor company. You have South Sea in British Virgin Islands. That's their PRC, their neutral company. Hong Kong Zhu Jingai International and Zhu Jingai International Holdings Zen Shen. And all these companies are together. They don't just work together. They are part of the same company. They go on to tell us that Transglobal Group is a U.S. holdings company incorporated in Delaware. We conduct our business through our PRC subsidiary, Shenzhen Zhu Jingai Brewery Technology Limited, which is a wine distribution and retail sale company based in Guangdong Province, China, with the mission to let the world taste Chinese wine and let the world fall in love with Zhu Jingai. Through offline and online promotion, we hope to deepen the customer's impression of the brand and promote sales. Now, I was kind of interested. What do they mean by through offline and online promotions? What are they doing? Well, I actually found an article. Now, I just want to touch on to this because I want to get back to that 8K. I got a few more things I want to show you. This looks like it was reposted. They got it here on uh, May 2022, but when you read it, they're talking about stuff in 2019 and 2020. But this is what it's all about. The media question that buy wine, get original shares is a scam. The founder of Zhu Jingai is very angry. The CEO, Chen Ren, is giving away shares of this company to the distributors who will sell his wine. That is actually what they're talking about. And the people in China are a little upset because they hear about this company, but they're not seeing anything done, just like us. They tell us here that an article came out in 2019, the press conference for the launch of the listing process of Zhu Jingai Liquor Industry was successfully held, yet they couldn't find any information. So they again tell everybody that Zhu Jingai Liquor is a U.S. listed company in the reverse merger of the U.S. OTC sector and has basically completed the legal process of mergers and acquisitions and is expected to officially announce to global shareholders on September 1st, 2020. So there was a huge delay. It looks like they were ready on their side, but just couldn't get it over the pond to this side. Now, you actually get a comment from Ren about giving away these shares. There's Mr. Ren Chen there. Ren Chen said in the video that the reason for giving away the stocks of overseas listed companies to dealers is that more people are needed to do things with him so as to give everyone something that can be seen, touched, and traded. So he just believes if I give you some shares of TGGI, even though you're in China, you may start trading the stock. And he's looking for ways to motivate people to come into this company. Jumping back to that 8K. Uh... Zhu Zhen Gai, the brand name, was founded by Mr. Ren Chen, a famous singer and post-80s entrepreneur. He insisted on building Chinese flavored liquor and Chinese liquor culture. Now, I don't know how much further I got to go down here. Here's their wines, and look at the volume of liquor. 53% volume. Woohoo! Boy, that'll burn going down, won't it? 
So they've got some real pretty bottles here. But what I'm really going after right now, I do believe, is their financials. They actually included the new company's financials in here. I'm going as fast as I can, folks. All the way down here, the big blue box. Right here. Okay. ZXG Holdings Limited Consolidated Balance Sheets. Now, there are a couple companies in ZXG, and they've got a couple different filings here, but I think I've narrowed this down. Their total current assets are 1.1 million at the end of last year, and before that, at the end of 2020, they were just about a half a million dollars. So they are increasing on that fact. They are also increasing their liabilities. As you would expect, a growing company does take on liabilities, but they're not too far out of whack. They're at $1.8 million here. Their revenues definitely increased almost 10 times. They went from just over a quarter million to almost two and a half million dollars. So we can see that the company is making money already. This is the name of the subsidiaries that are now under TGGI. She had nothing yesterday. Today, she has got ZXG Holdings Limited, Hong Kong Zhuzhengai International Holdings, Zhuzhengai International Holdings, Shenzhen, and Shenzhen Zhuzhengai Brewery Technologies. Now, they say three of those companies are investment holding companies, and this last one here is the trading of beverage company. I don't believe we have anything more over here. That pretty much tells you the story, folks. So what you got is a shell company that has just made a merger with a company that is in China, that has been doing business, that is run by a <laughs> a celebrity and the business is growing with this new nanotechnology that they're using they're making these fresh clean wines that have got a superior taste so i think this stock is going to run today was disappointing i expected more from the charts but i am surely expecting this thing to take off a chinese company that just had an acquisition with another Chinese company, if you will, because TGGI is a Chinese company. They just have a base here in America. It is a Chinese company that made an acquisition of a Chinese company that is successful and making money. Let's go take a look at that chart. We are now looking at TGGI. That is a six-month, four-hour chart. But before we jump into the charting, I seem to have uh, forgotten to show you all the information over there at the OTC markets, like the share structure. I think, honestly, I was just avoiding it because it's bad. It's really ugly, folks. It is 8.5 billion shares, ton of shares. Now, you don't need to have all the shares move to get a stock to rise. All you got to do is have people willing to pay more. So this can easily run on the news. Now, we can see a lot of activity on this chart. For a company that's been a show for years without any news presses, any tweets, no new filings, except to say, we plan on doing a merger with a Chinese liquor company. And that's all we got. That's a lot of activity. Matter of fact, let's take a look all the way back. Three years ago, this is one week now. That Each bar covers a week. But you can see we did have some strong volume back here. And this is January, February of 2021 when that newspaper article came out just after they quit tweeting when Chen got control of this. You had some big jumps here. She was starting here at triple zero four and went up to double zero nine. Oh my God. You're looking at 2,000% oh, gains right there. 2,000% gains, but nothing happened. We saw the newspaper article, a bunch of us did. They signed a deal. We thought, that's it, it's coming in now, but it didn't. It just kept lagging and lagging. So everything fell down till it bounced off the 50, and from here to here, you've got another 1,000% jump. Now, I don't know what made it jump because there is nothing new to be read, nothing new to see. Again, another jump. These are all on speculation. People get excited. Maybe there are tweets coming out. I have no clue. Let's come back down to that six-month, four-hour chart. So we've got all this activity here. In the last six months, we had a high of just over two cents and a low of just above a half a penny. She's been all over the 200. Really couldn't tell where she was going to go. Fell really low here. It looks like that is probably a low bubble on the 20-day. And she had a huge jump huge jump came from underneath the 10 
on top of the 50 and then just launched, folks. Got way up here on top of the 200. Technicals are absolutely screaming right now. All of them are pushing up except the RSI, which just had a wee bit of pullback. Looking at that 20-day, one-hour view, nothing going on until the low bubble hit. Looks like we had a bounce off of the low because there was no news, was no tweets, absolutely nothing going on. And then yesterday she started to climb. Somebody knew something, folks. Look at that. Look at that jump just at the end of the day yesterday, pushing up to the 200 on the hour. And then today she took off ripping. Technicals are very strong. RSI is pulled back because of that dip right there. Five day, five minute. So we did have a little bit of gains these last two days, and then today she took off. But there is that curious jump. What did somebody know? You don't move like this for no reason. That was a jump from uh, 007 up to 009. So you're looking at about 25% gains in the last, oh, what, half hour of the day. This morning, she started jumping pre-market. Wow, she was moving fast. She moved from uh, 009 all the way up here to uh, 12. So you're looking at 35% gains before the bell. Then she dropped, fell down here to just over a penny, to a penny and a half. So you only had about 50% gains at the most. And then she fell away. She came down here, hit that 50, rolled that 50 up, and then crushed it right here. But it's hanging just underneath the 50. I expected more. I really did, folks. But I would give this a little bit of breathing room. I think TGGI has a huge following of people who've been waiting for this. Now, maybe jumping into the financials, people see it's not worth $6 billion. That is really what got everybody excited. A penny stock that has a $6 billion company jump into it, uh, yeah, that thing's going to rip probably to $10. So people were very excited. Now that we see their assets from the vantage point that we could see. Now, there may be more over in China about this company that I'm not aware of. But what we could see, they were just about $1.2 million in assets. Which, coming from zero revenues, doing no business, being a shell company, is great. This is a Chinese company. TGGI is a Chinese company. We're just based in an office here in America. And they just merged with a Chinese liquor company. And we just saw yesterday how Chinese companies were running. So let's cross our fingers that the buzz builds up around the internet what just happened today and TGGI takes off tomorrow. And if you can get in around a penny and this thing goes to 10 cents, 15 cents, I don't know where it's going to go, folks. When things run, you can't guess. We had Chinese stocks run this last week that went from $8 to 2500 Come on. Who could have guessed that? And another stock on Friday from China that IPO'd that went from $4 up to $290, $280. So really can't tell. All I'm saying is there's a lot of boxes ticked right now. So I would definitely be keeping my eye on TGGI. And just so you know, I took a position today at a about a penny, just about a penny. So I'm ready for my ride. One of the tricks we've got to learn on these days when the OTC market has real low share volume is market sentiment, investor sentiment. You're looking for companies that people are already looking at regardless of share volume. We're looking at Chinese stocks last week. We're not quite sure why they were running, but they were running. TGGI is a Chinese stock. We're going to keep our eye on it. We just had that bill pass for clean energy and health. There's lots of companies involved in both of those sectors. So there are lots of companies that are going to be infected just by investor sentiment and market sentiment. And that's where I like to focus when I don't see a lot of share volume. Of course, use your scans on your trading platforms. See who's getting the most volume. See who's getting the most gains. But run on over to the OTC markets and use their current market page. It gives you all that information too, but it also tells you how many trades that company's had. And the more people around a company, the more price activity you're going to get. And you know what? When traders see price activity around a stock, it draws in more traders. And that's where we're going to make our money. DD will be the trick here. That'll show you all the companies that are running. I love DD, folks. The more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.